for the latest news from the world of radio every Sunday morning at 1030 on the International Radio Report on CKUT 90.3 FM in Montreal and online at CKUT.ca. Welcome, everyone, to the International Radio Report for June the 20th, 2021. My name's Shelda, and I am here with Jill, and we thank you for tuning in to our weekly show of news and information from the world of radio. You can reach us by email, radioreport at yahoo.com. Our show is uh, aired on CKUT 90.3 FM in Montreal. We are a campus community station, and uh, you can find us on the web, ckut.ca. Live stream us there or get an archived version of the show later in the week. And uh, we have a Facebook group, International Radio Report. We invite you to join that. Uh, Just search for International Radio Report and you'll find us on Facebook. Our YouTube channel, which has been going for a little while now, is up to 342 subscribers. You can find us also at International Radio Report on YouTube. And this week we posted up a special edition of the show. It's a review of the new Texan portable shortwave AM FM shortwave radio. Uh, So you might like to go and check that out on the YouTube channel. You can also find our weekly show on there, uh, usually within an hour after the live airing on CKUT. So that's uh, youtube.com slash international radio report. And uh, lots of people checked out the uh, special edition already. Within hours after it was up, uh, we, we had a, a good turnout for that. So uh, we appreciate that and uh, lots of nice comments about the show as well. We have a lot of information for you this week, so I guess we should get rolling right away with it. Uh, a couple updates and some new things coming up, some interesting and exciting things coming up as well. So we'll get to those uh, shortly here. First off, an update to a story we talked about a couple of weeks back the uh, native Mohawk radio station located in the uh, reserve of Ganasatagi, Quebec had uh, filed an application with the CRTC uh, for changes to their uh, radio station and the decision has come through so the CRTC broadcasting decision is out regarding uh, CKHQ which is on 101.7 FM And uh, the commission approved the application by Mohawk Multimedia for a new broadcasting license to operate in English and Ganyageha Mohawk language indigenous radio programming undertaking in Ganasatagi, uh, which is near Oka, Quebec. The commission will revoke their current license and issue a new one uh, once the Department of Industry confirms that its technical requirements have been met and after the applicant informs the commission that it is prepared to commence operations under the new technical parameters. The license will expire at the end of August in 2027. They'll continue to operate at 101.7 with an affected radiated power of 51 watts through an omnidirectional antenna with an effective height above average terrain of 55.9 meters. They must be operational at the earliest possible date and in any event, no later than 24 months from the date of this decision, unless a request for an extension time is approved before June the 14th of 2023. The goal of the station of the organization was to change its station status from an unprotected low power station to a class A1 protected station to protect the station's frequency and to preserve a radio service that provides Mohawk identity in the region by offering original content to the community. Uh, There's a lot more details in the decision. We're going to post a link to it. And uh, they have a lot of requirements as to how much local programming they have to air, the content of the uh, Mohawk language programming, etc., the music content, etc., if you're interested in that, you can uh, read through the uh, the full decision, which is quite lengthy, actually, and we'll post the link up to that. So uh, that's good that they're going to be a, a protected channel now. That's great because, uh, you know, nothing like getting on the air and then losing the rights to whatever frequency you're listening to. Yeah, or some more high-powered station kind of creeps in on you or yeah. whatever, uh, you know, not in the in the area. So uh, they're, I'm sure they're quite happy to have all of that uh, approved by the CRTC. So we'll keep you up to date on that. I'm not sure how long it'll take them to to get going, but uh, they have uh, 
24 months uh, ahead of them that they can uh, work on this. So hopefully it'll be a lot sooner than that. There's a really interesting program coming up, a shortwave event that happens every year, and it's from the BBC. And it's the BBC World Service Midwinter Antarctic Broadcast. And the, the information comes from Richard Langley and uh, Richard Hollingham and the SWLing Post. Uh, from Richard Hollingham, he writes, I'm proudly the executive producer of the Antarctic Midwinter Broadcast. It's made by Boffin Media for the BBC. He says, I'm about to deliver this year's edition. In terms of the broadcast itself, following the test uh, last Monday, the BBC decided to transmit on all four frequencies this year. Uh, because it's a unique broadcast, the shortwave version is 30 minutes long, whereas the global version will be 26 minutes and 29 seconds to fit the standard World Service half-hour programming following the news bulletin. The shortwave version uh, also has a different introduction as it's aimed just at our audience of 35 people in the Antarctic. Uh, the broadcast will be on Monday, the 21st of June, from 2130 to 2200 UTC. And there are four frequencies from three different transmitter sites. The first one is 6035 kilohertz from the Middle Eastern transmitter site, 6170 from Ascension Island, 7305 and 9505 will be from Wooferton in the UK. And this year it's also being carried on most of the World Service English streams from 2132 to 2200. However, the only shortwave outlets at that time are to Africa on 11810 and 12095, and those are from Ascension Island. So this is a really neat broadcast. Absolutely. I've heard it many, many times. It's aimed at the scientists and uh, uh, support workers that are stationed in Antarctica, where it is the dead of winter. This 30-minute uh, special includes music requests and letters from people, from family members back home. Uh, to the uh, people located at the outpost in Antarctica. So we'll post all the links up for this. And I think in North America, the 9505 frequency uh, might be a good one for you. And if not, you could check out those two African streams on 11810 and 12095. 11810 and 12095 at that time usually comes in quite well to the east coast um, of North America if you don't have too much noise. Definitely 9505. And it's a very festive, light broadcast. It's really worth listening to. And if you uh, are not picking it up on any of the frequencies, uh, try some of the online uh, yep. SDRs uh, that are maybe closer to the uh, to the transmitter sites or uh, you know somewhere between the transmitter sites and Antarctica and uh, see if you can hear it there. But it's, it's really neat to be able to hear it on the radio, yeah. uh, knowing that there's 35 people out there that this, you know, that the BBC remembers those 35 people and puts this special program on every year for them. It's really kind of neat. World Music Radio using the 11 meter band. This is uh, via Harold Cole to Glenn Hauser's World of Radio. World Music Radio has now commenced broadcasting on the 11-meter band on 25,800 kilohertz as of June 14th, 2021, at 11 UTC. The power is 100 watts, or some 250 watts ERP, and the transmitter site is a 110-meter tall mast in Marslet in the southern outskirts of Denmark. The transmitter will be on the air 24 hours a day, seven days a week, providing very good coverage uh, to the area. The second largest city in Denmark, uh, our Artus, or Artus, uh, as it's called. Uh, occasionally, the signal can also be heard much further afield when conditions are good, as the sunspot number is increasing until the maximum is reached, probably in the summer of 2025. Long distance reception on 25800 will improve. So best 73 is in good listening. Uh, and this is from World Music Radio. It's very interesting because with even sporadic e-skip sometimes spreading quite far, 
I would uh, I would take a listen from that frequency from time to time, especially if you start hearing skip on the CB bands or the uh, free banders on 11 meters. Try 25800. It might sound weak at 100 watts, but on those higher frequencies, a low power can actually make a really good distance. So if conditions are right, um, definitely this is one to try, 25800. The fact that it's on 24 hours a day, too, can help. That's going to help a lot, definitely. Yeah. And in a related kind of news, broadcast auxiliary broadcasts on 25, 26 megahertz. This is from Glenn Hauser's World of Radio. In that same part of the spectrum, uh, as we are getting to the peak of the sporadic E season, uh, keep an ear out for broadcast auxiliaries. Um, they are in the 25, 26 megahertz range. Very little activity lately, and most of these uh, that are actually on the EIBI list of frequencies might maybe be off or not be uh, working for years, but typically they are turned on only when needed, such as talkback during a remote event, so hosts may get non-delayed program audio. When you hear, first of all, WWV on 25 megahertz or 25,000 kilohertz, um, I would actually start trying these. And if you hear, once again, 11 meter band open, uh, try it out, CB skip. There are several stations listed in the EIBI list of frequencies. A lot of them I haven't heard in a long time also. But I do recall, and I think it's last summer, uh, receiving the El Dorado, Texas ones, uh, which is 25910 KLDE. Um, in 25990, also KLD, conditions are right, could be coming in. Remember, they could be activated at any time. Maybe they're kind of, you know, backups. So try all the frequencies, but uh, anywhere from 25870 to 26450, uh, there are several stations that have these uh, links. Now, they are in FM mode. That's something to know because I don't think it's mentioned here. Uh, they are FM outlet, but even if you don't have an FM-capable shortwave radio, a little trick, just tune a little off frequency with a regular AM mode radio. If you're on 25870, just tune like 25872. It's going to be a little distorted, but you will definitely be able to still listen to the program using that little trick. Yeah, these stations used to be quite active, particularly the Tampa, Florida one, I remember, and the Cincinnati one. Um, our friend Alan Roberts in St. Lambert, Quebec, uh, used to monitor that band regularly. And certainly when eSkip uh, happens, um, yep. that is a good time to check these things. So just, you know, start scrolling through that whole range between 25 megahertz to 30 megahertz. Oh, yeah. And, you know, there's other stuff in there, too. There's some FM repeaters that the amateurs use. You have the 10-meter ham band. So there's a lot of stuff that can possibly break through between 25 megs and 30 megs. And a good marker, I guess, as you said, is WWV. On uh, 25 megahertz. WV on. Then check the rest of that spectrum as well, because you'll, you'll possibly find some interesting stuff uh, living up there. Another good indication is uh, what we call the Super Bowl channel, which is channel 6 on the CB range. That is 27025. When you start hearing skip there, start tuning around 25 to 30 megahertz. You'll hear a lot of stuff. And don't think because they're high frequencies, it's daytime only. Sporadic e-skip can happen at any time. It can happen in the middle of the night, at midnight. So tune regularly. You'll be surprised at what you can listen there. And talking about uh, activity or solar activity, we had, uh, it's rather quiet, but we did have a small uh, geomagnetic storm this week due to a uh, CME, a small coronal mass ejection that happened. But conditions have quieted down and we're back into kind of quiet conditions, K index at one or two, which is quiet. Uh, solar flux, not very high, but uh, it's around 75 and um, as we go into the week ahead, well, uh, there's a little bit of solar wind that might be brushing off, but nothing really special happening. There's one sunspot group on the sun uh, right now, 28, uh, 33, and, but it's relatively stable. It doesn't mean you won't hear those higher frequencies, even though conditions are rather um, quiet. But the best thing is to turn on that radio and why not tune above 25 megahertz?
Yeah, it's a range that we don't talk about a lot, so uh, you can certainly go and check that out. If you do hear anything interesting up in those high frequencies, let us know too. We'd like to know uh, just what you're hearing up there. This is John Fisher of North Chelmsford, Massachusetts. I listen to the International Radio Port every Sunday morning at 10.30 on CKUT 90.3 FM in the fair city of Montreal. We continue our voyage around the world via radio, and we're off to Africa this time. At least a program and a station that's destined for Africa. It's a new station. It's called Radio Omanira Yoruba. And uh, it's been popping up, and people have been puzzled by it at first, not knowing what it was. But uh, through numerous sources uh, to Glenn Hauser's World of Radio, we have a lot of information on this new station. Uh, the new station is targeting the Yoruba people in Nigeria, and the broadcasts support an independent Yoruba nation. We received additional information via Ron Howard uh, to Glenn Hauser's uh, World of Radio. Some miscellaneous information. Oliomi Koiki is the radio presenter for the station on 9890 kilohertz. Radio Omanira Yoruba, Freedom Radio Freedom Yoruba. He is also an announcer, apparently, on Star Radio 9JA in London, England, which focuses on Nigerian issues. It is Koiki Media that has posted videos on YouTube of the test transmissions of this radio station. And just uh, as we're recording, we received an update to the schedule of uh, the transmissions of this station. It's coming via the Wooferton transmitter site in in England. And Ivo Ivanov has supplied the latest schedule for Radio Omanira Yoruba. And uh, the frequency throughout is 9890. And they seem to have different uh, timings, uh, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. The Friday transmissions uh, seem to run uh, from uh, 1900 to 2300 and on Saturday from 1900 to 2200 UTC. Then on Sunday, they have three separate transmissions, 1900 to 2000, 2000 to 2030, and 2030 to 2300. Each one of those is beamed a diff slightly different direction. And on, on four of the five transmissions, they're using 250 kilowatts. On the uh, 2000 to 2030 transmission on Sunday, they're using 300 kilowatts. So uh, this might be an interesting one to check out. Um, I think they said there had been a little bit of English programming content at times, but it's predominantly in the Yoruba language for the uh, Yoruba-speaking people in that part of Nigeria. So this, I guess, can sort of be classified as a clandestine station, really. Yeah, pretty much. As it's um, sort of pushing towards an independence for a section of, uh, of Nigeria. So uh, kind of interesting to check that out. If um, And if they do have some English programming, that would certainly be uh, be nice to hear. So 9890 is the frequency that they are using for that one. Uh, so we'll post up the links for this as well. Next, we go off to Japan, where there's a story that we've heard of in other countries uh, yeah. that may be happening now in Japan 44 of 47 AM radio stations in Japan are set to switch to FM by 2028. This comes from the Mainichi Japan news source via Mike Terry in the UK and World of Radio. 44 of 47 commercial AM radio stations across Japan plan to switch to FM broadcasting by the fall of 2028. So it's not happening right away, but it's in the works. And they say that this is to improve business performance by reducing the cost of operating both AM and FM broadcasting services. The move to FM will be made by all AM radio stations except those in Hokkaido and Akita Prefecture in northern Japan. AM broadcasting services are scheduled to start being suspended as early as the fall of 2023 as part of the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications 
test of switching to FM, meaning that AM broadcasting services will shrink in phases from 2023 onward. Now, um, there's certainly one problem with this in some areas where yeah. FM could be affected by mountain ranges, uh, valleys, yeah. um, interrupted signal, not being able to travel as far on FM as it would on AM. So that's something that's going to have to be looked at. And I, I, I think it would be wise to do this gradually to make sure that the signals are getting through to the audiences that need them on FM. Uh, chances are they were getting them on AM, but uh, they may have a little more difficulty in certain areas hearing them on, uh, on FM. Overall, 21 of the 47 AM broadcasters are set to participate in this experiment. And of the 21, 14 will take part with their broadcast relay stations even after the transition to FM by the fall of 2028, some broadcasters will continue AM programming as a supplementary measure, which, again, is probably a good idea, I think. Yep. So um, a ways to go with this, but they could start testing things out uh, you know, in a shorter period of time with the goal of having everything converted by 2028. It's interesting because in the article, they do say that there are a few of those broadcasting companies that will actually wait till 2028 before they actually switch off. So that's kind of saying that these broadcasting companies are saying, yeah, okay, it's interesting, but uh, we're not sure we got to do this real fast. All right. Well, we've, we've traveled around the world. Now we're going to leave Earth and go somewhere a little bit different. Yes, there's the Aris uh, Amateur Radio on, sh on the shuttle, Mir, and uh, the ISS event. It's a slow-scan TV event for some of the uh, history of amateur radio aboard uh, the space shuttle and the Mir space station and the ISS. It's going to happen from June 21st to June 26th. This comes from the Southgate Amateur Radio News. Harris report there will be an amateur radio on shuttle, Mir, and ISS slow scan TV. Um, it's going to be on 145-800 MHz FM, and that's the 2-meter band. Uh, the mode used, Papa Delta 120, PD-120. Uh, the Harris team will be transmitting slow scan TV images continuously. From uh, June 21st at uh, 0940, they start the setup in UTC, and transmissions should start a little later. It will go continuously until Saturday, June 26th, until 1830 UTC. Twelve different images that you can actually decode. Uh, downlink frequency, once again, 145.800. You'll need your, your scanner radio to listen to that, or your 2-meter amateur uh, rig and um, it's quite easy to listen to the International Space Station, by the way, for uh, SSTV. Even a little scanner radio, portable scanner, is going to work. And uh, they are, of course, saying that uh, for some, a signal should be receivable on a handheld with a quarter-wave whip. And if your rig has selectable FM filters, try to filter the wider filter for 25 kilohertz channel spacing. And for the software, you can use, if you have a smartphone, Robot 36 on Android. There's a Black Cat Systems has a SSTV decode for iPhones, iPads. Uh, MMSSTV in Windows is a great software that decodes uh, slow scan TV pictures. And all you'll have to do is know when the International Space Station is above your head because it has to be above you. And there are ways to check that out. You can go to amsad.org slash track. And uh, there are software also to um, check out when the ISS will be above your area. And just tune 145800. I'm pretty sure you're going to hear it. Um, it's a very strong and very easy signal. Yeah, this is something special for them to be doing it continuously for that many days in a row. Oh, absolutely. So uh, everybody should have a pretty good shot at it, and um, we'll put up the links of how you can track them and uh, know when it's going to be passing over you. It's a short pass, though, so you have to sort of grab them while you can. It's a roughly 15-minute pass. Uh, it's not always the same height, so sometimes the signal might be weaker because it's lower in um, the sky. But uh, you'll have a shot. That's definitely you'll have a shot. And the fun of it is try to get the... Uh, 
all the 12 pictures. Try to Yeah, that, make... that might be a, a tricky uh, exercise to try to get all of them. But, Absolutely. Uh, we'll see. It'll be a timing thing as to when they're passing over you and which pictures are transmitting at that point in time. Yeah. I mean, how, lo how long is the average picture? Uh, I'd take? say it's about a couple of minutes long. Uh, usually in a one pass, 15 minute pass, you'll have the chance to get if you're lucky, two full pictures, maybe uh, part of a third one. Uh, it's two to three minutes. It's And there's a pause between each image. Um, I don't know if they're going to use the same one. I think it's a 90-second pause usually they have. So you have a picture. If you hear nothing, stay on frequency. You might be in one of those moments where they're not transmitting. But um, it's uh, two two images is a good, a good pass, usually when you have okay. two of them. So yeah, that's that's going to be a real challenge if you want to try and get all of them. So uh, you'll yeah. have to kind of uh, map out your listing uh, times and map out the uh, the passes over your area. So it's time for the amateur contests. Yep, we have uh, two interesting ones and then a big event coming up next weekend. So first off, the two contests. Uh, the first one is the His Majesty King of Spain contest. It's an SSB contest. 1200 Zulu, June 26th to 1200 Zulu, June 27th. Sponsored by the Union of Spanish Radio Aficionados. And it's uh, for any licensed amateur radio stations anywhere. It's 10 through 160 meters. It's a single sideband. And uh, we'll post up the link with all the details and the rules and regulations for that one. There's the Re Ukrainian DXDG contest from 12 Zulu June 26th to 12 Zulu June 27th, sponsored by the Ukrainian Amateur Radio League and Ukrainian Contest Club. The modes are RTTY 75 baud and PSK 63 only, and that's 80 through 10 meters, no work band. And finally, the uh, big event of the weekend, it is the ARRL Field Day, sponsored by the American Radio Relay League. Uh, it starts at 1800 Zulu, June 26th, runs through 2100 Zulu, June 27th. Field Day is Ham Radio's Open House Day. Every June, more than 40,000 hams throughout North America set up temporary transmitting stations in public places to demonstrate Ham Radio's science, skill, and service to our communities and our nation. It combines public service, emergency preparedness, community outreach, and technical skills all in a single event. Field Day has been an annual event since 1933 and remains the most popular event in ham radio. Now, on the ARRL website, there is a Field Day locator. So you can use that uh, search to find out if any uh, areas in any clubs or groups in your area are set up with uh, Field Day radio operations. So uh, we'll put the link up to this site. You just uh, go onto that site look at the map, see where you are, and see if there's any activity in your immediate area. And um, all of the details about Field Day are on uh, arrl.org slash field hyphen day. So this is a huge event, uh, yeah. lots of activity going on, and it's a lot of fun too. It's, uh, it's a contest as well. As a, as a demonstration event. So uh, there's a little bit of both going on, and the bands will be full on that day for oh, sure. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of fun to monitor, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's already time to say goodbye. Yeah, lots of info today. Yep. Uh, do go to our Facebook page after the show. We'll have a lot of the links uh, from stories that we talked about today and, and resources that you'll need to uh, to try out some of these uh, listening tips that we've provided this week. And don't forget to go to our uh, YouTube channel. You can listen to our show there and uh, check out the uh, special edition of the show that we put up uh, this week, reviewing the Texan H501X portable receiver. They are both available to you on YouTube as well as previous editions of our show. That will do it for us today. We thank you for tuning in. We'll talk to you again next Sunday with our next edition of the International Radio Report on CKUT 90.3 FM in Montreal. Whether it's Africa Today or This Week in Africa, our BBC podcasts have got Africa covered. Just go to bbcworldservice.com slash Africa and download your choice.